All right, hi. So today is the uh, course is educational level 99, and I'm going to attempt it. It has already started. It's been uh, one and a half minute. So let's get right into problem A. Uh, let's define a function f x x is a positive integer as follows. Write all digits of the decimal representation x backwards. Okay. Mm, okay. Then get rid of the leading zeros. Okay. So. Uh, okay, so decimal representation backwards. Then uh, then get rid of uh, zeros, leading zeros. Okay. Now the other function is x um, upon x f of x. Okay, f of f of x. Okay, so. I, I think this will just count the number of leading zeros. The task is to calculate the number of different values of gx among all numbers x. Okay. Mm. Right. I think this will just uh, count the number of leading zeros. So uh, it should depend on the number of digits, right? Yeah. Just the number of digits is the answer. Okay. So test cases. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that was the first problem. Let's move to the second one. You are standing on the x-axis at point zero, and uh, you want to move to an integer point x greater than zero. Okay, x is the input. You can make several jumps. Okay, you can either jump to plus k or you can jump to minus one. Right, so uh, the remainder of x with k should be zero. So you want to make the remainder zero. For that, uh, you'll do minus one jump. So I got this one too. So int x minus wait a minute. What's k? Okay, 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 okay. The K is changing. Mm. Okay. K is changing for each jump, right? So, what is the minimum number of jumps required to reach point X? Mm. Let's see. So if we don't do any of the minus one jumps, we'll reach a point that is beyond uh, that is beyond our required point or at the required point. So can we always convert one of them to minus one and reach the required point instead? Mm. Let's see. Um, I think if we're at least two away from our required point, we can always do it because uh, uh, something like uh, I think it's something like yeah, like one plus two plus three plus four, something like this. Then if we want to decrease it by two, we can just make this minus one, or if we want to decrease it by three, we'll make this minus uh, one. And so on. So, uh, if the difference, like well, the only problem will be if uh, we reach at point x plus 1 by doing this, x plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus uh, 3 plus, and so on. And then, if we change any of them to minus 1, it will be a problem. I think in this case, we'll have to add one more. Okay. Mm. 
and uh, one will be uh, like uh, this one more will be added on both sides um, now we have to decrease uh, now we have to decrease 6 so we can just make this minus 1 right so um, if it is x plus 1 then we have to make another move otherwise it's fine So I take uh, int x as input in x. Since it will run uh, only till square root, then uh, that, that's why we can do it naively. Mm. Uh, if I did two moves, then i will be equal to three. So in this case, we have to see out i otherwise we just see out i minus one. I think this should work. Did I even copy the test case? Okay, I did. Yeah, it's worked. It worked. Let's uh, see the third problem. Okay, so the first one is correct. The second one is also correct. Okay, we got two problems, and uh, let's go to the third. Okay, this is a game theory problem. Alice and Bob are playing ping pong with simplified rules. Uh, Okay, yeah, this is, these are the simplified rules. The one who doesn't make a return loses play, okay. The winner of the play commences the next play, uh, fine. Alice starts the first play, Alice has X stamina and Bob has Y. To hit the ball, each player spends one stamina. So if they don't have any stamina, they can't return the ball, okay. Uh, can't serve the ball. If both players run out of stamina, the game is over. Sometimes it's strategically optimal to not return the ball, okay? That might be true. Lose the current play, but save the stamina. On the contrary, when the server uh, commences a play, they have to hit the ball if they have some stamina left, okay? Both Alice and Bob play optimally and want to first maximize the number of wins. Secondly, minimize the number of wins of their opponent. Okay, I think these are both the same thing because uh, like one of them will uh, definitely win. No, wait. I think these are different, but I'm not sure. So you want to maximize your wins and minimize the wins of the uh, opponent. Okay, so this, this might mean that uh, if the number of games aren't fixed, then you want uh, like uh, you don't want that a uh, lot of games happen. Like you only want uh, those games to happen in which you win. Anyway. So uh, they're saying sometimes it is strategically optimal to lose a game, but save the stamina. So I wonder when that might be true because they want to maximize their wins and minimize the wins of their opponent. So how can it be optimal to lose a game? Okay. So Alice starts the play. If Bob Okay, I'll start the play, and if Bob uh, decides to uh, intentionally lose it, then Alice will get a point, and Bob will have his uh, initial stamina. 
but uh, alice will lose one point okay how can this be better to uh, like how can this be better than hitting the ball back let's say bob hits it to they want to firstly maximize their number of wins right so if they want to firstly maximize their number of wins the best way to for bob to play is to like let to uh, alice win all of uh, her x shots and that way he'll be able to win all of his y shots right and uh, y like uh, like there is a way for bob to uh, get his score y so he will definitely get the score y now so like we know that bob score is definitely y so we want to decrease alice's score uh, as much as we can yeah i think that's it so let's see how we can do it mm, bob must win uh, every single of his game right? i think when alice has exactly one stamina left uh, then when she'll serve bob will make the return hit and win that one so that way alice will have a score of x minus 1 and bob will have y okay so i think i think it's always x minus 1 and y yeah even in the sample this is happening maybe i should have seen the samples first because it is like very clear from the samples that you have to always print x minus 1 and y okay so we solved till c i hope this is correct okay yeah uh now we are at uh, sequence in swaps okay okay it's something about swaps so we giving uh, sorry we given uh, an array okay a sequence we given a sequence uh, consisting of n integers and we are also given an integer x the task is to make the sequence a sorted okay okay we want to make it sorted fine to make the sequence sorted you, you may perform the following operation any number of time okay possibly zero will choose an integer we can do this any number of times okay we'll choose an integer such that uh, okay uh, it is in, inside the uh, bounds of the array and that element should be greater than x then we can swap the value of ai and x okay okay so i think this way uh, in each move the x will keep on increasing right yeah x will increase uh, upon each move so oh, let me try to just solve this sample first without seeing their uh, way of solving it because a lot of times it is a little bit misleading so Oh, let me think of my own way to do this. Uh, maybe uh, okay for this specific case, I will just uh, put the one here, then I'll get the two out. Then I'll put the two here, and then I'll get the three out. Uh, I'll put the three here. I'll have five out, and I'll put the five here. Maybe that's what they did. Uh, yeah, okay, that's exactly what they did. so we want to make it sorted and the number of operation should be minimum okay
Okay, so let's see what we can do here. So if the uh, okay, so best case if the array is already sorted, then the answer is zero. Fine. But if the array is not sorted, then uh, whenever we perform an operation, we will most uh, definite like we will most certainly put x inside the array and like take an, one element out. So x will definitely be in the array and some element from the array will go out. Okay. But x will definitely be in there. So if x is smaller than any other element in the array, we must put x uh, in its correct position. Okay, so isn't uh, the game about this? Like you have to put x uh, in its correct position every time. Like we can never win by putting x in a wrong position. Because, uh, because, like, because since uh, because x keeps on increasing, right? So if we put x in a wrong position, there's no way we can correct it later. So is this just greedy? Like, uh, just uh, find the most optimal place where x should be and put it there. Is it just that? It might be because uh, I think this was from the sample. Yeah, it's almost uh, the thing from the sample. Like you put one here and so on. So I think this is uh, four moves, right? Uh, three moves, right? Uh, I put one here. I get two out. Put two here. Okay, okay, yeah. If I put three here, it will become sorted. So I think uh, just kind of a brute force. You just keep on putting X in the in the correct place and you know keep on checking if it's sorted or not. So this one is already sorted. So I think this one should be zero. Okay. Mm, let's see the next one. Okay, it has only one element. So this is also already short sorted. And it should be uh, zero. Okay, now here, is this uh, impossible? Oh, no, it's not impossible. So we have to put uh, 10, I, I think we have to put 10, no, I think this is impossible because, yeah, uh, like we cannot move this 9 from here. So uh, this is impossible, we have to bring minus 1, right? Okay. Now, uh, yeah, this one. So, what when what can we do here? Okay, we'll put x in the right position. Uh, that is here, and uh, that's it. I think. Yeah, that, that that will solve it. So it's one. Okay, this one's a little tricky. It has really big values, but uh, let's see. So 18 must come to uh, here greedily. Then 81 will come here. Then uh, 24 will uh, wait a minute. Eighteen comes here, then eighty one must come here, okay. Then three two four. It come here, okay. Yeah, and that solves it. So it's one, two, three. Yeah. So that's it, I think. We just have to find the correct place uh, to put X. You know? And uh, we have to put it there. Essentially, keep on doing moves, and uh, like in the end, we just have to count it or something like that. That's pretty much what we have to do in this problem. Okay. I need n and x. Okay. And uh,
okay yeah now i just have to keep on doing it greedily so hmm count this is the count of how many moves of them while uh, it's like it not sorted okay while the vector is not sorted so i just have to make a function Mm. Hey, let's see. Print. Uh, ex, uh, sorry. Vector. Okay. Now we have to check if A is sorted. Okay. So we just have to find one inversion. Ai is uh, smaller than Ai minus one, but uh, mm, it is not sorted. Otherwise, it will be. So while it is not sorted, we have to keep on doing this. And what we'll do is uh, we'll keep on increasing the count while it's not sorted. And in the end, we'll just uh, print the count. Exit it. Okay, so now we have to put x in the correct position. Right? We have to find the first element that is greater than x, and we have to put x instead of that element. Okay, so and I is. Uh, Or equal x. Okay, so I think this will find the first element uh, such that a is greater than x, and uh, yeah, that's it. So when when I finally find found it, then uh, like let's say I am not able to find any such element, then the answer is minus one. Okay. Otherwise, when I found it, I'll just swap A I and X. That's it. I think that's all I had to do in this problem. Um, wait. Sorry. Size of K. Okay. Oh wow, this is correct. So if this is correct, I think uh, this. Contest is going really nice till now. Four problems in 24 minutes. Uh, especially when I started, like uh, I think I started 1.5 minutes late, right? Oh, right. So we got four problems in 24 minutes, uh, and only 39 submissions are there till now. And that too when I'm making the video. So yeah, 17th rank right now. So going really nice. Anyway, so you're given. Four different integer points on the xy grid. In one step, you can choose one of the points pi and move it uh, one of four directions one by one. Okay, the normal grid moves. In other words, if you have chosen point this, uh, okay, the goal is to move points in such a way that they form a square with side parallel to o x and o y axes. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So this is this is tough. Okay. This is much tougher than the previous problem problems we solved, and that's why there are zero submission right now. Let me see F also. Okay, it has a, like a really long statement. So first let me read X. First, first let me read E again. Okay, I've read it. There's nothing more to read here, but this is like really tough. This is very tough. Or maybe it's because uh, it has something to do with uh, geometry. Maybe I'm not sure. Not geometry because, uh, like, even if we have to do anything with distance, it's Manhattan distance, and I don't think Manhattan distance is a geometry thing. But let me see. So to know a square, we need one vertex and maybe the 
size right yeah just the, uh, just uh, like we need uh, only these two things one of the vertices and the size of the square so we need these two things we have to decide uh, uh, essentially we need to decide three things the x coordinate of the of one of the points the y coordinate of one of the points and the size of the square so we need these things and um okay okay i think there are some bounds maybe let's see okay so if the points are something like this okay this is almost already a square let me just uh, okay so if the points are something like uh, this i don't know something like this so if i take this distance or let me just pick another color if i uh, if i take this distance right and i take this distance maybe the length of the side of the square will never exceed both of them but why do we want to go that far right mm, not sure but uh, it feels like this because uh, what that will mean is we move uh, either this up or this down Uh, let's say this distance is greater than this distance so what this means is in our solution we either move this up or we, or we move this down and this is the top point and this is the bottom point so why will we ever move this down that's what i'm saying mm -hmm. so maybe the size of the square is uh, this length right if it is this length um then what this means is maybe we have to move this one somewhere here this one somewhere here and this here maybe i don't know why i'm thinking this will remain in this position but uh we'll we'll see that later okay after that i really don't think there can be an optimal solution in which we have to increase the size of the square uh, like more than the distances between okay. uh, i don't i don't know how to prove this but i really have this intuition that uh, this will happen maybe we don't uh, maybe we don't decrease it but we can certain uh, maybe we don't increase it but we can see certainly uh, de decrease it that might be beneficial but like that still leaves a lot of confusion as, as to what we can what we have to do i'm sorry mm Okay. okay these are pretty comprehensive to be honest but even in the samples they are not increasing i don't think that will matter much i mean like okay maybe like even if i accept without proof that okay we'll never increase the size of the square how will that help me 
can we guess the size of the square like if we can guess uh, the size of the square or if we can even get a range in which the size of the square will lie and if the range is considerably small then that might help us Okay. okay, so one thing is certain that the lowest point will definitely be in the in the lower edge of the square but actually i think all of the points can be lowest right because uh, it doesn't say that uh, we are not allowed to be collinear or anything so it's possible that all of them are the lowest yeah there are no there are no extra constraints how do we even do this Okay, I might have a, like I might have a way, but for that, I need the, uh, I need to guess the size of the square. Hmm. Can we guess the size of the square? Let me see from the samples. Hmm. Okay, so this was four, and the size was two. This was four, and the size was two. This was, uh, I think this was zero. The size is two, and this is five, and one. And I don't think we can guess the size of the square at all. Mm. But maybe. Can we ternary search the size? Like, is, is it monotonous uh, uh, in both the parts? It seems so. Yeah, it seems so. Uh, it's like let's make the optimal square, right? And if we try to make a square that's smaller than that, will require more moves. And if we try to make a square that's even smaller, we require even more moves. And if we try to make a square then that's, that's bigger, then we require more moves. And if we try to make an even bigger square, then we require even more moves. I think we can just ternary search the size of the square because the So the perfect size that, uh, that, that that like the perfect size that is optimal that will give us the minimum number of moves. So we can maybe ternary search it, and maybe that will be the only minima that uh, present. So ternary search might be good. Okay, let me just ask a question to them. Okay, is uh, a square of side length zero acceptable that is if i move all four points to the same point i hope it's not a stupid question because i have heard that uh, problem setters get really um, i don't know what's the right word but uh, i don't like it when people ask them stupid question oh it was a stupid question see we've written that a square with side zero is allowed okay so i'm really sorry for asking this but uh, anyway 
I feel really bad about asking that. I must be thinking, am I blind or what? Maybe. So I think I can tunnelly search the correct sides of the square. And if I know the size of the square, then let's see what we can do. So let's say somehow magically I know the size. Like I know that the size is A. So how can I choose which goes which vertex goes where? Okay, let me just answered yes. So obviously it's yes because I'm stupid, but anyway. So we got two solves by now. And uh, those aren't a lot, so I don't think it's a very easy question. I think ternary research just might do it. So if we know the size A, I think what we can do is uh, instead of like trying to decide which point goes where, we can maybe just uh, try everything. Okay. So it's four factorial, I think. Yeah. So there are 24 ways. So let's say uh, first I say this will go to the lower right, uh, and uh, like these will like like I'll just make a permutation of uh, Lower right, upper right, lower left, and upper left. Okay, so like these four, I'll try all permutations and I'll try to place these points everywhere. Okay, now once I've decided the positions of the point and I've also decided the size of the uh, square, what I can do is let's say this is the like, this is the lower left and this is the lower right and this is the upper left and this is the upper upper Sorry, this is the upper right and this is the upper left. So what I can do is I can just uh, uh, subtract A to this, then uh, subtract uh, A to this and subtract A to both this and this. Okay. Now did I have to add it? Or... Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, I have to subtract it. So then I'll get four new points. And now I just have to decide where to put all four of these points so that mm -hmm, like the total distance uh, is like we have to put all of these to the same point. And this I think we can do just by choosing the median of the coordinates. Yeah. Okay. So this is solvable. And uh, I think we'll be able to do it in just uh, 24 into some constant, let's say not more than 8. So in these many operations, we'll be able to do it. And uh, along combined with the ternary search, I think we can get this right. Okay. So uh, one thing for sure I can say is, I don't think the size of the square will be more than 10 to power 9. Because that's just ab absurd. Like why would you... Like keep on sending the points away and away. Anyway, so mm, okay, test cases. Oh, right, there are a lot of test cases. So will that work with this? So it's 24 into whatever tunnel research takes. Tunnel research will take maybe um, okay. So anyway, tunnel research will be maybe. Uh, what will be the time complexity? I think it's log uh, 3 base, uh, like um, 10 to power 9, like log of 10 to power 9 base 3. I think it's that. So it's uh, log of 10 to power 9 divided by log of 3. Okay, it's not much. I'm just 18. 18 into 24 is 452 into 4, 10 to power 4. Okay, yeah, yeah that will work. So, okay, yeah, let's try to solve this. I need four points, right? So, let me just make an array of four points, right? Mm, okay. Now I can take all of these four as input. So if you're wondering why is this working, I have something to take pair inputs anyway. Coming back to this, now I need to do a ternary search on the 
size of the square. I don't really know how ternary search works. I mean, not very experienced with that. Let's try. This will this will kind of be uh, one of the first times I'm doing a ternary search. Mm. Uh, do we do u minus l by 3? Not sure. Yeah, I think that's what we do. So m1 is like uh, I think L plus D and M2 is U minus D, right? I think that's how it works. Anyway, so we need the answer at M1 and we need the answer at M2. Okay, so I think we should make a function. Um, maybe just uh, answer, okay? At which point? Right length, okay? So uh, let's just call it A instead. Okay, so A is the side length. So we need the answer at M1 and we need the answer at M2. We'll use these to kind of decide where, in which direction the turn research goes. Anyway, so coming back to this, there are some fireworks in the background. I hope my mic didn't catch it. Uh, but uh, like it won't matter much if you, even if it did. Anyway, I know the size. Now I need a permutation of um, what goes where, right? So for that I can just okay, maybe just get all of the permutations, right? So yeah, that will work. Okay. So first I sort the pairs, then. Uh, I can get all of the permutations. Do while next permutation of p comma p plus four. Okay. So I got all of the permutations. Okay. So in the current permutation, let's say zero is the lower lower left. One is the Lower right. It actually kind of helps to you know, number the uh, like right comments about what you're placing where. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, especially in DB, like I always write what the states are storing. So uh, this is a good reference uh, usually. Maybe I need uh, this out somewhere. Go back to this. Now, uh, I think I need another function to get the answer. Okay. So, some auxiliary function I need. Okay. We had this auxiliary function. Um, okay, I think that's it. I don't need any input, right? Maybe maybe just the size. Okay, so I have the size and the four vertices, right? I make another array. Copy that one into this. Okay. Now I'll make the shifts as needed. So. Z1 dot uh, uh, fr is the uh, x coordinate, right? So x coordinate should decrease by, uh, by a, okay. So z1 dot fr, I decreased it by a. Then uh, z3 dot sc will get decreased by a. Cool. And z2 both will decrease. Okay. Now I think I'll have to sort this again. Sort uh, z comma z four. No, no, no. I don't think I can do it like that. Mm. 
I have to consider the x and the y coordinates separately because we need all the uh, x to be at the same point and we need, then we need all the y to be at the same point. So I need another array maybe. Mm. Let's pick a vector. Okay. Map i04. Uh, vi dot push b dot push back z i dot f r okay i put them all in the vector and i sort the vector uh, now i get uh, now i need the median right so that's just v1 okay so int median equal to v1 now I need the deviation uh, from this median from all the points. Okay. So int answer is equal to zero. Finally, I return the answer. Now I'll add all the medians. So for int x in v answer plus equal to absolute of uh, the x minus the median. Okay. I think this did it for one dimension. Now I need to do it for the other dimension. So I'll just clear the vector. Again, do this thing v dot push back. This time red i dot uh, second. Okay. I think it's so far so so far so good. Sort all v again. Then essentially do the same thing again. That's it. I think this will give us the answer. So the answer is just what auxiliary of A. Okay, this is the answer. Right? And we need the minimum answer. So int answer equal to let me put it equal to infinity. So then I need the minimum answer that I can get using any of the permutations for the size A. Maybe I did this a uh, little wrong, uh, and if I and if I get uh, wrong answer to, to change it, maybe I should have put the permutation thing outside this, outside the whole tenor research. Maybe I'm not sure though, because maybe like maybe by changing the order, uh, you know what I want to think about it. Now. So we have to con we have to compare which is smaller. So if answer for M1, okay, if this is smaller than the answer for M2, okay, then we'll do something. Otherwise, we'll do something else. Okay. I think uh, not sure how tenor research works. Do we do this? Hmm. I don't think we want to go it on. Uh, we want it to go on when they're equal. Yeah. So maybe I'll just keep a answer something. If M1, uh, the, the answer is smaller for M1, then I'll say it's M1, otherwise it's M2. Okay. Now, uh, it's a parabola, right? I think we set uh, U equals M2 minus 1. Yeah, I think that's what we do. And in this case, we put L equal to M1 plus 1. I think it, this will work even if they're equal. Okay, so. Yeah, that, that way I get the size. 
and I'll just print the answer for answer new line is this it is this correct I'll be surprised if it is correct okay it's not correct I'm getting zero every time how am I getting zero every time anyway uh, wait a minute let me just print uh, what the answer I got Oh wow, uh, this is a lot every time. Maybe this function isn't working. Well. Oh, I didn't return that. Wow, this is correct. Wow. I think I took a lot of time, but uh, I'll be like, it will be really great if this works. Um, wow, 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 wow. Wow, this is like. This is like one of the best contests that I've done in a really long time. Wow, I'm I'm eighth, uh, I'm in top ten right now. Wow, um, this is this is like uh, this is really great for me at least. Anyway, we're at problem F right now. Mm. I'm actually really happy I'm doing very well in this content because like uh, I bricked most of the contests that I've done on screencast like uh, whenever I try to screencast a contest I do so bad that uh, like I perform uh, on the level of a purple and I'm red so I'm in this I've done I think I think I've done really good it is one of my best performances ever and I'm I'm also commented like I'm also doing the commentary and explanations but uh, like this is better than all of my performances even when uh, I don't uh, have the like, I mean, uh, even when I don't have the camera and the commentary and anything, like even when I uh, solve it with full concentration, I don't think I have ever done a contest so nice. Anyway, so uh, by the way, I didn't notice that uh, it's uh, educational round 99, so the next round will be like a century or something, centenary, code forces, centenary round. Like, Code forces round C, yeah, they can write it like that. I think the code forces education round C because I think when uh, the normal 256th round happened, they wrote, they wrote uh, FF. So maybe they can do something funny like that. 